the mountains of central Mexico. Every winter, these high forests host one of the greatest spectacles in the insect world. Monarch butterflies have flown here from as far away as Canada to spend the winter. In their tens of millions. It's early March, and the butterflies respond to the warming sun. They now have enough energy to take to the air. They crowd onto the flowers to drink energy-rich nectar. Tens of thousands gather at streams and seeps to drink. They're getting ready for the long journey back to the north again. And soon they start to drift away from their winter colony to recolonize North America. Scientists unraveled the incredible story of the monarch in the 1970s. But the monarch is just one of millions of different kinds of bugs. There's much more left to discover in the world of bugs. We might think of bugs as tiny and insignificant, but come into their world and meet the creatures that really rule the planet. Bugs, in all their forms, dominate planet Earth. And when we enter their world, we see that it's us mammals that are insignificant, and the bugs that are big. For hundreds of years, the great museums of the world have displayed the wonders of nature. Naturalists and explorers collected spectacular creatures from all over the world, creating exhibits that demonstrate the rich diversity of life. But the most amazing creatures are not always the most obvious. The miniature world of bugs is full of surprises. Some, like butterflies and moths, are familiar. Yet scientists still find hundreds of new kinds each and every year. Others look more like creatures from an alien world. But what are bugs? Scientists call all these creatures, spiders, millipedes, crabs, insects, arthropods, meaning animals with jointed limbs. And that name highlights one feature that they all share. All bugs are covered with a precision-engineered exoskeleton. Big animals, from frogs to whales, including you, have a hard skeleton on the inside, supporting all the soft parts on the outside. Arthropods are the other way round. 
They have a hard skeleton on the outside, like a suit of armor, protecting all their soft parts on the inside. And, like a suit of armor, their legs must have hinged joints so they can move. This arrangement makes bugs incredibly successful. No one knows how many bugs share the planet with us, but research in tropical rainforests has given us some clues. The latest guess is close to four million, and over a million of those are insects. And of those million insects, around one-third are beetles. A theologian once asked British biologist J.B.S. Haldane what could be inferred about the mind of God from the nature of his creations. Haldane replied, an inordinate fondness for beetles. The biggest diversity of bugs is hidden in the world's tropical rainforests, and so are the most spectacular. This giant millipede is 20 centimeters long. Why are bugs so successful? One reason is that tough outer skeleton. Made of a substance called chitin, it can be molded into an infinite variety of shapes. Jaws can become tough weapons. It can be colored to make flamboyant displays. And even formed into delicate wing membranes. Insects are the only bugs to master flight. One reason why they're the most successful of all the arthropods. When monarch butterflies take to the air, they cover extraordinary distances. Those that left Mexico three weeks ago are now arriving in the United States, fanning out into the southern states. It's hard to imagine the sheer scale of the monarch's journey. Yet we've only recently understood how insects fly at all. Scientists have only just started to unravel the secrets of insect flight with the help of obliging creatures like locusts. Locusts will fly for long periods if they're hung from a wire tether. which gives scientists the chance to see the details of how their wings work. Unlike birds, insect wings have no muscles within them. They're powered by muscles in the thorax, so all the complex bending and shape-changing that keeps the insect airborne 
must be controlled from the base of the wing through a complex arrangement of struts running throughout the wing membrane. Slow down 50 times, butterfly wings twist and bend with precision on each stroke, generating lift and thrust. For them, a miracle of microengineering. And for us, the chance to watch an aerial ballet. An insect's exoskeleton can be turned into delicate gossamer wings, but it's also incredibly tough. And we don't have to travel to a remote rainforest to see this, because hidden among the branches of this European oak tree are some armored fighting machines. This is a male European stag beetle. He's high in the canopy, searching for a female. But he has a rival. A wound on the tree oozes an irresistible sweet sap and distracts the other male, so the first male can keep searching unchallenged. For now, But when the meal is over, the trouble starts. These males are armed with huge jaws, and they use them like the antlers of a deer, to wrestle. Each male tries to grab the other to lift him off his feet. The object is to throw your rival to the ground, tens of meters below, and like Miniature sumo wrestlers, neither loosens his grip. Finally, success. And with success comes the reward. A female. The huge jaws of male stag beetles need to be tough, but some insects need even stronger mouthparts. Locusts are famous for devastating cereal crops, but cereal and grass leaves are packed with abrasive silicon, which wears down the teeth of many grass eaters. But insect jaws are strengthened with a substance called sclerotin. So tough that some insects can bite through metal sheets. And locusts can destroy an entire cereal crop with deadly efficiency.
butterflies don't chew, but suck. So their mouthparts form a long tube that reaches deep inside flowers to draw up nectar. And nectar fuels the incredible journey of a migrating monarch. But this monarch will never return to the far north where it was born last autumn. The next generation will continue the journey. Even the insect eggs are covered in that versatile exoskeleton, intricately shaped at the microscopic level to stop the growing caterpillar inside drying out and at the same time allowing it to breathe. Now the next generation of monarchs chews its way into the world. But the exoskeleton of the egg has one last use. It becomes the monarch caterpillar's first meal. This amazing exoskeleton can be put to another use. Insects are masters of camouflage. Sitting on this orchid, an orchid mantis is almost invisible. It doesn't move as a butterfly flutters closer to the trap. The butterfly's in range. But even the best laid traps sometimes fail. This mantis impersonates a dead, rolled-up leaf. A disguise that works almost anywhere. A mantis can turn its head in any direction. When it spots potential food, it turns to look directly at it. Both eyes are brought to bear on the target, giving the mantis good binocular vision so it can estimate distances very accurately. Now all it has to do is wait for its prey to walk into range. And this time, the camouflage works. But if the subtle camouflage and viciously barbed front legs of the mantis seem incredible, some insects have gone even further. At the base of a sheltered cliff, the sand is pockmarked with tiny pits. This moonscape of craters is the work of the larvae of ant lions. Ant lion larvae vibrate their bodies to dig into loose sand. Then, by moving in a small circle, they slowly create a conical pit. The lava then buries itself at the bottom of the pit to wait for its unsuspecting victim. The steep slopes of loose sand are a lethal trap, almost impossible for the ant to climb out. And the lava uses its head to flick sand at the ant, 
knocking it down to the bottom of the pit again and into the jaws hidden just below the surface. Not far from the minefield of antlion pits, on the forest floor, another trap is about to be sprung. For this cricket, there's nothing unusual about this bit of forest floor, but it's walking towards a completely invisible trap. The cricket suspects nothing until part of the forest floor lifts up to reveal a trapdoor spider. The spider lives in a burrow capped with a lid made from silk and soil particles. When the spider detects prey, the lid snaps open in a fraction of a second. Slowing down the action 80 times reveals how the spider grabs its prey and drags it into its lair. Spiders are armed with powerful fangs for injecting poison. So a male with courtship on his mind has to be very careful. To a female spider, he might be her lover or a meal. At night, a male bird-eating spider wanders long distances just to find a female. Sense organs on his legs detect her distinctive fragrance. When he meets a female, he must assess her mood very carefully. He starts his courtship by gently tapping her with his front legs. But her response isn't very encouraging. She soon makes herself clear. It's a no. And he retreats before she can turn him into dinner. By now, the monarch caterpillars have grown and weigh 2,000 times more than when they hatched. This is like a human child growing to the size of a large bull elephant. The caterpillars feed on milkweed plants, which contain deadly poisons. The monarchs are immune to these, but store them in their bodies, making them poisonous to their predators and they advertise this with bold colored stripes. Milkweed plants are weeds growing on waste ground right across North America. So monarchs are rarely short of food. Many bugs are happy to take advantage of human environments. A beautiful garden to us, but to bugs, a gourmet restaurant. Some bugs are helpful. While searching for nectar, many insects pollinate our plants. but others are not so welcome. Aphids suck out the plant's sugar-rich juices, weakening the plant and transmitting diseases. But aphids have their own problems. Other insects specialize in eating aphids. Ladybirds, 
and the larvae of lacewings. Lacewing larvae have long, hollow mouth parts that pierce the aphid, then simply suck out the aphid juices, slowly killing it. These dramas play out in the best-kept gardens, and some bugs are just as happy in the best-kept homes. They've adapted to exploit our hospitality. This sophisticated remote sensing kit belongs to a cockroach. it can detect the slightest air movement. Lightning reactions and an impressive turn of speed keeps a roach one step ahead of us. And six legs makes for a perfect all-terrain vehicle. Another deceptively sophisticated creature the amazing fly. In flight, flies are gyroscopically stabilized and their complex eyes take in information faster than ours. Flies see our world in slow motion. On the ground, they unfold complex mouthparts, releasing saliva to liquefy solid food and then slurping up the resulting broth. Yet most of us don't appreciate how exquisite these unloved bugs really are. Our usual reactions are just the opposite. After feeding for three weeks, the monarch caterpillars have turned into pupae, and now the next generation of butterflies is about to emerge. Once it's free of its casing, the butterfly pumps body fluids into the wings to make them expand. The transformation is complete. Little remains of the caterpillar, except all those plant poisons it ate. The butterfly has stored these, so although it can't eat plants, it's still poisonous. It advertises this with bright orange and black wings. Warning coloration. The pattern is easy to remember. If a predator tries one disgusting mouthful of monarch, it won't do it again. As soon as the wings are hard enough, the monarch continues the journey started by its parents, ever further north. Eventually, it will stop and breed and die, and in turn, 
its offspring will continue the journey, eventually reaching as far as Canada. The distance traveled on the monarch's journey is amazing, especially for such a small creature. Insects live in a different world from us. What we see as a tranquil meadow is a tangled jungle for insects where countless lives pass us by unseen. And this grass blade jungle is a dangerous place. At the scale of insects, starlings appear as giant monsters with voracious appetites. Many birds have much sharper eyes than ours and can spot insect prey wherever it's hidden. And precision flying means few insects are safe. After a good meal, there's nothing better than a refreshing bath. For many creatures, insects are nothing more than bite-sized packets of nutritious protein. A meadow viper. During the summer months, it eats mainly grasshoppers and crickets. Like all vipers, it has hollow fangs to inject poison into its prey and quickly overcome even large crickets. and a highly sensitive organ in its mouth detects the scent of its victims. The two sides of the snake's jaws move independently of each other, so the jaws work like a ratchet system slowly dragging even the largest prey into its mouth.
but crickets and grasshoppers are not completely helpless. A leap with their powerful back legs takes them clear of danger. But even with all their defenses, the world is a dangerous place to be an insect. There are watching eyes everywhere. And some surprising ways to snatch a meal. From a standing start, an arowana can leap more than a meter. A chameleon shoots out a tongue that's as long as its body. Frogs and toads have tongues that are hinged at the front, which they can flip out at high speed to mop up insect prey. Archerfish spit water droplets with incredible accuracy to knock insects into the water. deadly killers of insects are often other insects. Beneath the surface of a pond, a dragonfly larva is hunting. Slung below its head, the lower jaw forms a hinged trap. It has large eyes with good binocular vision, so as it stalks its prey, it judges precisely when it is in range and when to fire the trap. jaw holds the prey while the other mouth parts slowly chew it up. North America, the summer is coming to an end. Most bugs need to shut down over the cold winter, but the monarchs are now flying south again. These are the great, great, great grandchildren of the monarchs that left Mexico last spring, making a journey to a place they've never seen. Cold and wet weather is lethal to monarchs, so they fly south to find exactly the conditions they need to survive.
In the tropics, there is no freezing winter, and spectacular bug life continues year-round. But even here, the weather can cause problems. Rainforests grow where there is plenty of rain. For creatures as small as insects, the huge raindrops can be lethal. Most rainforest plants have leaves adapted to shed water. Thanks to their microscopic structure and layer of wax, lotus leaves are unwettable. Insects also have a layer of waterproof wax coating their exoskeleton, so they can shed raindrops and avoid drowning. But at this scale, a tropical downpour still means a heavy battering. In the world of bugs, there are always more surprises. Unlike birds and mammals, most insects don't take care of their offspring. They just scatter large numbers of eggs and hope for the best. But some make very caring parents. Dung is a popular item on the menu. This pile will soon be colonized by thousands of flies and beetles, all wanting their share of the dung. But dung beetles avoid the crush by carving out a piece of dung and sculpting it into a ball. Now they roll it away to bury it, providing their larvae with their own private food supply the insect version of the takeaway meal. It's hard work for the little beetle, and other dung beetles are not above trying to steal a ready-made ball, which leads to a fight.
Left in peace, a dung beetle will roll its precious ball many meters away, well clear of other dung beetles drawn to the dung pile. Dung beetles show the first stages of simple care of their offspring. But taken to extremes, extended families can become complex societies. All these leafcutter ants are sisters, but they're sterile. Only their mother, the queen ant, can reproduce. Their job is to find and carry leaves back to the nest, where they turn them into compost to grow fungi, the food for the whole colony. These colonies fascinate us. They remind us of our own societies, yet at the same time seem alien and sinister. These leaf cutters are part of a public display. The workers carry their cargo of leaves tens of meters over rope bridges from their feeding area back to the nest. In human terms, that's a long walk to the grocery store. But the most sophisticated colonies are those that have shared our lives for thousands of years. Honeybees. Honeybees live in colonies of up to 50,000 individuals. And like the ants, most are sterile female workers. They build wax combs, nurseries for their larvae. Then, when each larva is fully grown, the workers cap the cell with wax, leaving the bee to pupate. When the adult bee emerges, it bites its way through the wax cap, ready to start its first job in the hive. When the colony gets to a certain size, it splits. The old queen takes thousands of workers in a swarm to look for a new site. These swarms have always been valuable to us. They can be used by beekeepers to start a new hive. Humans have kept bees for their honey for millennia. Paintings from ancient Egypt nearly four and a half thousand years ago show beekeepers at work. Scenes not very different from this. Humans have always had a sweet tooth and for many hundreds of years, honey was the sweetest thing around. But bees are much more valuable than this. They pollinate our crops, as do countless other insects. 
Most of us don't give insects a second glance, or when we do, we see them as pests. But the human race wouldn't last a month without insects. It's winter again, and the monarch butterflies have found their way back to those same few groves of trees that sheltered their great, great, great grandparents last year. Why they come to these few tiny patches of trees is still a mystery. Perhaps the combination of temperature, humidity, and exposure to sun is exactly right to help them survive the winter. Yet, surely other groves would do just as well. This is only one of countless mysteries that still surround the world of bugs. The more we discover, the more questions we need to ask. From the peaks of remote Mexican mountains to our own backyards, there's an unknown world beneath our feet. A world we rarely notice. But these are the creatures that run the planet. Tiny creatures living big lives. The world of big 